we are going to be revising inverted commas. When using direct speech in your writing, you will need to use inverted commas surrounding what was said. Direct speech is any spoken word by a character. So we need to separate the speech clearly from the rest of the text, which means we need to use the correct punctuation. This is going to help the reader follow what is going on in the story. Inverted commas can also be called speech marks. It is important to remember when punctuating direct speech that all of the words which are spoken are enclosed with inverted commas. So this is what inverted commas look like. So the first couple of inverted commas look like the number 66. And this is a really good way of remembering which comes first in direct speech and also how to write them. We call these the opening inverted commas because they begin at the opening of the speech. The other couple of inverted commas look like the number 99. So again, this is a good way of remembering which speech marks close the direct speech and how to write them as well. We call these the closing inverted commas because they close and end the direct speech. So let's have a look at an example of direct speech with inverted commas. I can't believe I managed to capture the Iron Man, said Hogarth. Which part of this sentence has been spoken? So let's have a look at it again. I can't believe I managed to capture the Iron Man, said Hogarth. So we can see that it's this part of the sentence which has been spoken. So we need to make sure that that is where we put our inverted commas. So at the beginning of the speech, we have our opening inverted commas. So these are the ones which look like the number 66. Notice where I've placed them as well, they're at the top of the first letter. Then we finish our speech. I can't believe I managed to capture the Iron Man, said Hogarth. So here we have our closing speech marks. Next, I need to make sure that my sentence begins with a capital letter. So where the direct speech starts, the first word must have a capital letter. So here I have a capital I. Not only do we need to punctuate our direct speech with inverted commas, we also need to include punctuation before closing the inverted commas. So here, can you see where I've put a comma just before the closing speech marks? Commas are really important to help separate direct speech from the rest of the text. So when direct speech comes before a verb, a comma needs to be used. So here you can see I have my comma before my closing speech marks. If the direct speech is a question or an exclamation, then we can use either a question mark or an exclamation mark before the closing inverted commas. So let's have a look at my direct speech here. How could I capture the Iron Man? asked Hogarth. So Hogarth is asking a question, isn't he? So we've got our inverted commas around the direct speech. I have my capital letter to begin my direct speech. And because he's asking a question, rather than have a comma this time, we have a question mark before the closing speech mark because Hogarth is asking a question. Let's have a look at this sentence here. So we've got, I captured the Iron Man, shouted Hogarth. So this time Hogarth is shouting. He, he is exclaiming out loud. So I captured the Iron Man. We can see that that is the speech. That is what Hogarth is saying. So I have my opening and closing inverted commas around the direct speech. I have my capital letter and because he is shouting and exclaiming, we can show that through an exclamation mark for our punctuation. So rather than a comma, 
or a question mark this time, we have an exclamation mark. Finally, when using direct speech, we need to include information about who is speaking and also how they are speaking. This is called a reporting clause. So here we've got my original sentence. I can't believe I managed to capture the Iron Man, said Hogarth. So in my reporting clause, it tells me who said it. So it said Hogarth. It is Hogarth who has said this bit of speech. However, there are so many alternatives to choose from to express how a character is feeling rather than just using the verb said. This also impacts on how the reader interprets the direct speech. So let's have a look at some examples. So here I have an alternative sentence with a different verb for my reporting clause. So we can see rather than said, it says whispered Hogarth. So this will help me when reading it out loud because I know how I need to read it because I know how Hogarth said this sentence. We need to be as quiet as a mouse in case he sees us, whispered Hogarth. So we can see we have our opening speech marks, our opening inverted commas. We begin with our capital letter, just like we did before. We have our comma, our piece of punctuation. We have our closing inverted commas. And we have our reporting clause, whispered Hogarth. So who said it and how it was said. The sentence. This time, our verb is shouted. So Hogarth is shouting the sentence. So let's have a go at reading it out loud. The Iron Man is heading this way, shouted Hogarth. So we can see this time we've read it a lot differently than when Hogarth whispered. So let's have a look for our punctuation. We've got our opening inverted commas here, our capital letter to begin our direct speech. Because Hogarth is shouting, our punctuation this time has changed to an exclamation mark. And then finally, we have our closing inverted commas because the speech has now finished. Our reporting clause tells us who was saying it and how it was said. And we have shouted Hogarth. The last sentence here, we have somebody different this time who is speaking. So this time we have some direct speech from Hogarth's father and he's questioning Hogarth. So let's see how we would read this question out loud. Are you sure you didn't just imagine seeing an Iron Man? Questioned Hogarth's father. So we have, again, let's go through our punctuation. We have our opening inverted commas, our capital letter to begin the direct speech. Now, because Hogarth's father is asking a question, we need a question mark at the end of the direct speech. And finally, we have our closing inverted commas. For our reporting clause, we have Hogarth's father who said it, and he was questioning Hogarth this time. So showing that he feels a little bit confused, he's not quite sure whether to believe Hogarth or not. So here we have all of the examples of direct speech, which I have just talked through, using inverted commas to surround what is being said. Have a go at coming up with some of your own direct speech. And remember, inverted commas must always surround what is being said to help separate speech clearly from the text.